People laughed at me. People ridiculed me for saying God said miracle city. Even church folks, I said, now why could you believe that a man could name the city Motor City because of the motor industry? Why could you believe that a man <clears throat> was not sent of God named Motown because of the music industry? And why can you believe when the newsman named it murder capital because of the murders that were taking place? Now why would you be excited? And why would you go crazy? When God uses a man or woman to get over it and speak a decree over a city that seemed to be dying and a city that seemed to be going through and gotta speak life. Breathe the number of days I still my father. And people say, there he go. He crazy. I'm the craziest Negro for God you have ever set your eyes on. I am the one that believes him when people say they believe him. And then when the miracle come, folks doubt him until they see it. I'm the one that will speak it before I see it. I'm the one that will decree it before it happens. That's what God called us to do. That's what he called you to do. Speak to your situation. Speak to your children. They don't have to be in your face. Say, as long as you are not in my house, you are going to be saved. Something's got to be spoken by the word of God with faith. Like, you know, every way he sent John the Baptist, it was dry. It was dry. That's why people came out to hear him. Even if they were going to churches. Because it was kingdom you're preaching, eventually it got dry. Even if the money get to you, if you don't have the king in you, you dry. The church, especially African American church, is more prosperous, than, it's more prosperous today than it has ever been. And our communities and neighborhood and the people have not shifted. You know why? A people were not raised up to want to be sent out into the highways and the byways to make a difference in people's lives by giving them the bread of life and speaking and decreeing over them and encouraging them and blessing them and then giving them a sense of direction. We got in our Cadillacs and kept driving. So I guess what that said, it don't matter where you live as long as you come back from where you came from and help somebody. I'm not going back into a hole that I came out of. But I will throw you a ladder and I will give you a hand. Oh, you don't want to talk to me. You don't want to talk to me now. I didn't see Joseph go back into the cave to come up. I saw Joseph go to the palace. God put him in the palace, but he didn't forget them that was out of the wilderness, did he? He said, remembered his father's house. He remembered his brothers and sisters. And he made sure that he made room for them in the palace. So they go to John because John has the presence of the Holy Spirit upon his life. You got to remember back then the Holy Spirit was upon, not in. We had not received the infilling of the Holy Spirit until Jesus gave up the ghost. So John is ministering as he's led by the Holy Spirit. And the people that are in dry places were being blessed. And he had to give them the message that in order to get the totality of the revelation and the experience, because some of us, if we're not careful, we gotta be honest, we have learned to go to church and conferences for revelation. Preacher, give me some more revelation. Give me some epicenosis. Give me some theological thought. Turn my intellectual wheels. But I need demonstration. I need something to change in my life. I need that revelation to be able to get down on the inside of me. And work out everything that's not like God up out of me. But then stir up and rise up and awaken the Holy Ghost in me. To get my wheels turning again. To get me to get back to my first love. To get back to my place of praising God. Not praising the preacher because he preaches so good. But praising God reminded me of how good God's been to me, that in spite of what I'm going through, if I just trust God, my husband acted crazy, my wife acted crazy, my boss that lost his mind, 